Hello, welcome to www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I'm going to talk about image size. And changing the size of an image is not necessarily a fun YouTube tutorial to watch, nor is it really a fun YouTube tutorial to give. Um, most times I give creative tutorials that are really fun and do kinds of cool things on your photos, but this is like a it's one of those things you have to talk about. And there's a lot of reasons why I need to understand image size. And one of the big ones is saving an image for the web. And another huge one is when it goes into compositing. Um, so the first thing we're going to tackle is uh, like setting this up to save it for the web and just kind of understand how image size works. So if you don't have the rulers on your image, you can press Control R. Uh, in, in the Photoshop pane on the photograph and that will toggle the rulers on and off. I like the rulers toggled on and off because sometimes you have a, a profile on your camera that saves your uh, image as like a 54 inch by 32 inch file and you're thinking wow that's huge but then when you get into the image size stuff you understand that that's really not that huge. So we're going to go to image and go to image size. Um, and if you look here you can see at the top you're seeing the width and the height of the pixels. Um, when you go down to the document size, you're seeing that it's 13.647 inches. You can change the inches to centimeters, millimeters, uh, pica points, blah, blah, blah. And then the resolution is at 72. And then you've got some things down here that uh, might confuse you, but we'll get to them. So constraining proportions, uh, that's an important one. When you unclick constrain proportions, do you see how those little links went away? This is very dangerous because if you go in here and you change this to 10, it's now going to be 10 by 10.273 and watch what happens. We smush our image. It's really important. I want to press Control Z to go back. It's really important to make sure that you have constrained proportions selected unless you know for some strange reason the exact proportions that your image is supposed to be and it's going to fit those parameters. Let the math happen for you. So now if we change the width to 10 with constrained proportions selected, it's automatically going to change our height to 7.528. So it just made our image smaller, but it didn't destroy it. So we're going to press Control Z again, go to image, and go back to image size. A couple more things we need to talk about here. So now this is a uh, 300, uh, the resolution of this image is 300 pixels per inch. If I were to make this 72 pixels per inch, and then press enter. You're going to, 72 pixels per inch is typical of saving for web. Um, if you notice, when I press 72 pixels per inch down here, it changed the width and the height of this image to 983 by 740, so it dramatically reduced the size of this image. Um, <clears throat> 240 pixels to 300 pixels is good for printing, 72 pixels per inch is great for the web uh, because it gets your file size down. So you, when you upload the pictures to your website, it doesn't take 30 seconds for it to load, um, especially people that have older computers. Um, it's really important to, to do smaller sizes. So I'm going to press OK and watch how it shrunk it down really small. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to be a smaller image. If we saved it, it'd probably be somewhere in the range of, I don't know, um, four or five hundred kilobytes as, to, as opposed to four or five megabytes. So let's press Control Z and go back to image size because there's a couple more things we need to talk about in here. So now, if you go to resample image, notice how you don't get any of the linkage up here. You can't affect any of this up here. You're resampling the resolution of the, the image. Now, when I change this to 72 pixels per inch, it's going to make this 56.861 uh, width at a height of 42.806. Now, when I press OK, nothing changes. The inches got bigger because it's taking the amount of pixels that are there and dispersing it over a, uh, over a wider range of inches as opposed to compressing it by, by putting more pixels in each inch. Um, and that's the difference between 72 pixels per inch and 300 pixels per inch. Um, so this is really important to think about when you're doing compositing. And I'm going to get into that in a second here. Um, let's go to the typical way uh, that I would save this for the web first. So let's go to image size. Actually, I would go back a little bit. Um, image size. This is exactly how my photographs come out of my camera. 300 pixels per inch, um, and they're usually about 10 by 13. 
that's, that's going to be different for every camera. It depends. I have a four-thirds camera. If you see that this is 4,094 over 3,082, the ratio of is, is 4 to 3. Um, all my pictures come out in four-thirds ratio because I have a four-thirds camera. Um, kind of a downfall, but you know whatever it is, what it is. Now, if I was going to save this for the web, um, I would un I would uh, click resample image, um, and I would change this to 72 pixels per inch down here, and see what comes up, what what my width and my height are. Most people have 1024 by 768 displays, uh, so you could go 1024 by 768, or actually it's going to be 771 because that's what the conversion comes out to after I let Adobe automatically do the math. That'd be the typical way I would save for web. And at that point, I would go to File, Save As, or File, Save for Web, and go ahead and save that image for the web. That's saving for the web using the image size, or saving it in a smaller format for, um, like when I write eBooks, I make them really small. I want to put them in the eBook so that um, they don't take up a lot of space in the eBook. The more space it takes up in the eBook, the larger your eBook is, and the more money they charge you when uh, you, for every book when they transfer that image over to the or that book over to the person so it's really important to understand image size especially when it comes to uh, putting it into documents so that documents aren't so large or putting it onto the web so that your web page doesn't take forever to load another really crucial important thing about image size is good getting into compositing and I know spiders are everyone's favorite so I chose a spider for today so if we look at this spider image we go to image um, actually, right off the bat, let's just go into it like this. So, say you download some stock photography and you cut this spider out, which I've already done for the sake for the sake of this tutorial to make it a little bit faster. You cut this spider out and you want to move it onto this bigger web picture, which you think is a bigger web picture. This is a 17, roughly 17 inch by 12 inch photo, and this is roughly 17 inches by 12 inches. So we cut the spider out and we press the V key and we move that spider over and whoa, what's going on here? Our spider, even though these pictures were the same size, is huge. So what do I need to do in order to fix that? So let's go ahead and look at this image. We go to image, go to size. If you look here, you're going to see that the resolution on this one is 240 pixels per inch at 16.8 by 12.6. The resolution on this one is 72 pixels per inch at 16.806 by 12.597. So we need to get the, it's kind of like doing fractions when you're in high school um, and finding the lowest common denominator to, to get it to that point. The problem with making this a 240 pixel per inch picture is when we do that, it's really going to blow things up and do do something called interpolation, where um, basically the pixels weren't there to begin with, and you tried to make them, and you told Photoshop, "Hey, I want you to be a 300 pixel uh, per inch photograph," and that's all fine and well because right now it is, but you get really bad pixel distortion or what they call interpolation, where um, Photoshop had to fill in pixels that didn't exist based off of what it thought was surrounding it. Now, if we moved our spider onto here, now our spider is the size that it should be for this picture. But the problem is we got that interpolation thing with the back. With this kind of photo, it doesn't look so bad because the spider web is um, is kind of blurry to begin with, so you can kind of get away with it without without worrying. Um, but the idea is to try and get to that lowest common denominator um, on on the photo. So if we go back here. This is our, our original image sized photograph at 72 pixels per inch. Go up to this one, image size, 240 pixels per inch. Now if we truly want these to match up, um, you kind of have to take this one down to 72 pixels per inch. It, it, it is what it is, you, you kind of have to do that. So we'll go to 72. And now we take that spider and we can move it over. And we don't run the risk of those blown out pixelated web that we had before. We still have the spider there. The only problem is now we have a really small scale uh, photo or image at the end because it's not 300 pixels per inch, it's 72 pixels per inch. It'd be best for uploading to web. You might get a decent print out of it, but your best print's going to come from something like 240 by 300.
So just remember, keep that in mind when you're ever doing any compositing and you want to move stuff over and things just aren't working out. Look at the image size. See how many pixels per inch each picture is and try to match the lowest common denominator on that um, in order to not interpolate the photo. So that was image size with www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis. I know this was kind of a crash course in it, and it's really something that you kind of have to play with in order to understand it, and it, it's not fun to play with, but it will pay off in the end. Um, so play around with that image size stuff. Uh, pay attention to constraining proportions, um, and always make sure that's checked. Otherwise, you'll get some distorted photos when you go to do your, uh, your, your resizing. All right, have a great weekend. Uh, hope you found this tutorial helpful. I know it's not fun. I promise next week I'll do a creative tutorial. Take care, everyone, and have a great weekend.